Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutation, much love and respect to you, Aki, about them pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Now, I wanted to um, do a lesson based upon uh, a couple of videos that I've seen dealing with this, uh, this image here that you see. This is um, a Roman era good shepherd ring found off Israel in ancient shipwreck. Okay, so looking at the, the, the ring itself, you can, you can see here that this is an afro. Okay? This here is an afro that this individual has on his head from what I can see here. All right, and um, he's carrying two lambs, or what looks like to be two lambs. Okay, this looks like a, a, a ram. All right, maybe another another type of sheep or a bag or something along, along those lines. Okay, hence why it's called the Good Shepherd. Um, one thing that you notice is that he he seems to be in. Seems like it's uh, definitely has to be Roman attire. Okay, this is the depiction that somebody has. This is not an actual drawing of the Messiah, but this is the depiction that the person had and inscribed on their ring. Okay, they might have been Romans. They might have thought there was nothing wrong with it. Although we know that the heavenly, the, the heavenly Father's son would have came in a Hebrew garment. He would have been wearing only Hebrew garments. Okay, Israelite garments. Now, the point though is that he looks like a so-called black man. Now, going back to the pre-Renaissance era, this was common knowledge that the Lord was a so-called black man. This wasn't anything new, all right? I have a few pictures here dealing with the ancient icons, the pre-Renaissance ancient icons. Because what does the word Renaissance mean? It means rebirth. What is it the rebirth of? It's really the rebirth of the beast, you know, it's the is the uh, the the beast whose deadly wound was healed, representing the Edomite rulership. Because when we were in rulership for a thousand years, okay, all the images were dark. Okay, even this one has an afro, but it seems to be faded out. You know, because that's what they would do. They would throw bleach on it. They would they would fade it out. All right, they would fade out. They would find a way to deface and fade. And, and sometimes they would completely paint over paint the image over again okay to look like so-called white people all right you see see these straight up afros straight afros you understand what i'm saying so this is just this is clear okay this is clear all dark dark images very dark images dark skinned images because that's how the messiah and the people of the lord looks they are, they are, they have the, uh, originally they have dark skin. Now we have our people that are scattered around the earth and some, and some of them will come looking like other nations, but this is the prototypical look of an Israelite, the Afro, the dark, the dark skin. All right. The, the, the dark to, to medium brown skin. All right. Because it wasn't just dark skin people. There was, there was dark, there was medium brown. Right, what they would consider so called light skinned Israelites, those were always there. Um, let's go into um, let's go into the comment section real quick, and then I'm gonna go into the script. I want to go to the comment section to show y'all something. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, Salakia. So Let's get let's get Lamentations five. <clears throat> I'll start at verse ten. It says, Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. Alright? So because of the famine, their skin turned dark, but they it says black. Which Edomite do you know with black or very, very dark skin because of a famine? Or even even sunburn, that doesn't happen. 
All right, the most they can get if they if they have enough melanin, because most of these Edomites they they're not even able to really tan. When they tan, they turn more red. All right, and they get sunburned. But there's certain there's certain Edomites right from certain areas that can get a bit of a tan. That's not dark skin. All right, don't you know the the majority of the people on the earth are dark? You got the, the Elamites, the so-called East Indians. You got the Ishmaelites, the so-called Arabs. Don't let them fool you. When you go to them Arab countries, you see a lot, a lot of dark-skinned people, man. A lot. They just show you the ones they want to show you on TV <laughs> that were mixed with, with Esau. But the Arabs, are, are those are dark people, man. You got the, 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 the Moabites, the Thailand people, the, 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 the Polynesian people. These are all dark people, the Eskimos. You see, because Esau would like to tell you that being uh, the dark, the skin color is determined by your climate. Well, how can you explain the Eskimos? They are super dark skin, but they're in, um, they're in, they've been living in a cold climate for thousands of years. I would say, yeah, going back to the, yep, absolutely, th thousands of years. All right. Going back to the time of the Assyrian captivity when the ten tribes left and came over to the side of the earth. Gad, yeah, the so-called Native Americans, they were in, up in Canada. And when you look at them, pictures of them, they, they're always, they were dark-skinned. Going back to them old, older pictures, even now, but a lot of them now have been mixed with the Edomites. So now they look, you know, they look mixed. Okay, some of them look like so-called white people. All right. Now, let's go to uh, Job 30 and verse 30. It says, my skin is black upon me and my bones are burnt with heat. Okay. So this is not a statement that a so-called white person would make. All right. Even though we know nobody is really black on the earth, you know, Super, super black, jet black. No one is really jet black. It's people that are close, but they're not really jet black. This just means dark skin. Okay, it means their skin was his skin was really, really dark. Okay. And when you go into Songs of Solomon, right? Psalms Psalms of Solomon 1 verse 5 it says I am black but calmly and that word is not but it's really and you know how Jake says I am black and beautiful I'm black and beautiful well this is basic this is what uh, Solomon was saying I am black and beautiful O ye daughters of Jerusalem as the tents of Kedar as the curtains of Solomon okay that's what was being said here Okay, look not upon me because I am black. And this is all poetic, by the way. This is all figuratively speaking. He wasn't writing to a, a woman specifically. He wasn't writing to any. He was writing, really speaking of the truth and the heavenly father. This was not um, speaking about an actual, uh, uh, he wasn't writing to an actual uh, woman. Okay, look not upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keepers, keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Why would an Edomite, why would a so-called white person, okay, write that I am black because the sun had looked upon? Why would he write something like this? Even poetically, it wouldn't make sense. Because you don't turn dark skin from the sun. You don't turn dark uh, to the point of being damn near black from the sun. Okay, you turn red, all right, and get sunburned, or you might you might have certain Edomites that turn kind of tannish, which is not dark, <laughs> okay? I believe the term, and by the way, the term dark, tall, and handsome, tall, dark, and handsome goes back to the, uh, to the ancient world, right? Pre-Renaissance era. You see, Esau will have you, to, oh, I was talking about a tanned person. That has nothing to do with a tanned person. That's foolishness. That's not dark. It was talking about a, a so-called, a tall so-called Negro. 
Okay, we gotta, we gotta, we have to break down the lies because the lies have over flooded the earth. Okay. Oh, hold on, let me get this. Let me get this, man. This is Isaiah 29 and 16. Surely your turning of things upside down, because that's what Esau did. He turned everything upside down, man. Right? He said the Lord was a so-called white man. He said that uh, the alphabet community is good, you know, that there's no such thing as gender. He said all these things and turned the whole earth upside down, okay, with his lies. <clears throat> Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the works say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed of him, uh, shall the thing... Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? <laughs> okay. The fact of the matter is, is, is that the Heavenly Father created you. And you're trying to say that the way the Heavenly Father made it was incorrect. But he created you. Now, I want to look up something real quick. Okay. Dealing with Hezekiah because they found a coin with Hezekiah on it not too long ago. And that coin had braids, man. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. See if we can find it. Is a kind of Persian governor? No, no, no. There was a there was another coin that they found. I know what this is all about because this is this is clearly the. This looks like the Babylonian symbol. This is the Babylonian symbol. Okay. I don't know what's going on with that? Uh, there was one. There's something they found, man. Hmm. See if I can find that somewhere, man. Maybe on DuckDuckGo. Because they like to um they like to, they like to suppress information on Google. Coin of King. Oh, excuse me, I didn't even write Hezekiah correctly. Let me try to write this properly. Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Seal of King Hezekiah. What's this? That doesn't even look like Hebrew writing. And that face looks like an Edomite face, kind of. Well, you can't really see it properly, but it looks like something like the Roman feathers on his head. You know, you can't see that one properly at all, really. Um, but don't forget that Esau tries to hide the truth, man. He tries to hide the truth, and he'll, he'll put all kind of... He'll put all kind of deception out there like this. This is nothing more than de deception. All right. Man. Nah, bro. I know it wasn't too long ago they came out with that, man. A few, few months ago. Hmm. Okay. Can't seem to find it right now. If a brother can find a link of it and put it inside the description box that would be uh would be appreciated you know this is how the, this is how the israelites looked man all right they had the dark skin they had the, 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 the either they had an afro a mini fro or, or braids with, with beards okay anyways i don't want to stay too long on that maybe i'll get back to that but what I want to do is I want to go to the comment section real quick. All right. And show you that these people don't believe this image. And I'll tell you why, man. <laughs> I'll tell you why I believe they don't want to believe this image. Okay. It says, honestly, I found that those whose spiritual eyes are closed get jealous 
when it, no that's not what i'm looking for the spiritual warfare is off the charts we are being personally attacked on every level god he's faithful i would like the prayer for us to get through I agree the timing of this release does seem a bit suspect the okay let me get rid of that okay the messiah is not materialistic so an ornament of a gold ring seems also to not ring true first of all this is not his ring they didn't say it was the ring of the messiah they just said it was a ring of depicting the messiah they didn't say it was a ring of the messiah okay and furthermore it's <laughs> why would these so-called israeli scientists try to paint the messiah as a so-called black man why, why would they do something like that first of all that would make them liars right because they're trying to claim an heritage that does not belong to them all right mm -hmm. i'm having a hard time seeing how this ring resembles jesus you see looks like a Roman soldier holding up an alien, which that's true. It, he is in Roman garb, okay? He is in Roman garb, but that could that was just the that could have just been the person's depiction. All right? That could have just been the person's depiction of the Lord. What they had like now, they have they have a depiction of the Lord now. Let's get it. Let's type in Jesus the Christ. All right? I got to find that that coin of Hezekiah that they found, man, because can't seem to find that information for some reason. This is when I typed it. I didn't type in the white Jesus. I type in Jesus Christ. All right, Jesus Christos, and this is what pops up, man. This is the image that they have in their head. Is this accurate according to the biblical description? Absolutely not. Nothing close to it, man. You know. But even but now they're starting to kind of admit, you know, some some of them. Starting to admit, oh yeah, he wasn't a white man. He 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 was he was a he was a, a Arab. No, he wasn't an Arab. See, so they tried to do a digital uh, using their so-called science, which is nothing more than witchcraft, to to depict the image of the Lord, and, and he looks like a like a <laughs> like an Amalekite. You know, get out of here, man. The Lord was a so-called black man with white woolly hair, as it's described in the scriptures, and we're gonna get it. But before, actually, you know what? Let's get that right now. Let's get that right now. And these are the basics. These are the basics of the scriptures. Matter of fact, let's go up. Let's go to, this is Revelations 1 and 1. It says the revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, we're going to say the correct name, which the Most High gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who be a record of the word of the Most High and of the testimony <coughs> of Yahweh Shai and of all things that he saw. Okay, this is the revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right, so he's being revealed. Okay, let's start at 13. It says, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about with the pap, girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. All right, which means they were white and woolly. It speaks about the hairs. It's speaking about the, the beard and the facial hair. Okay, so his head, which means the hair on top of his head, and then his hairs, meaning his facial hair. You have to understand, old English man. Were white like wool. All right, were white. In color and woolly in texture, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. Right, brass is brown. Okay, you can also replace brass for the word bronze. Okay, as if they burn in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So his feet was not only brown, but it was as if it burned in a furnace. Okay. Okay. 
This is this is brass. This is brass. This is burnt. This is burnt brass. This is regular brass. Okay, they're both brown. He wasn't just brown. He was dark brown. You dig? Because you know how Jake Jake has that that shine to him. He don't just look. He don't just look. Uh, just just like like a hammer. He got a, he got a shine to him. You know, he got that glow. He got that. It all look look look. See the sh the shine. It's that shine. So, so one part will look darker than, than another part will look bright. Okay? That's why it looks like brass, man. And also the scripture said that wisdom maketh a man's face to shine too. So you look even brighter when you got that wisdom. Anywho. Alright. Nonetheless, we can get Daniel's the seventh chapter. Tenth verse. This is Daniel seven, and verse ten. It says, oh, actually, verse nine. So, Lachi, and I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit. Who's the ancient of days? Who's before time itself? The heavenly Father, okay, whose garment was white as snow, and his head like. Why didn't say his garment was like wool? Why didn't it say his garment was white as wool? No, no. It said his garment white like wool. It said his garment was white as snow. And his hair of his head like the pure wool. So it's telling you the texture and the color of his hair. All right? Or, or actually the, the texture of his, uh, of his hair here. Okay? Which is what? Like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheel as burning fire. Yeah, because the pure wool, what is the pure wool? Pure, the, really the purest wool would be the white wool, the purest wool. Okay, because not all wool is white. So when it says white like wool, wool has different colors. All right, there's brown wool, there's wool with spots, there's all kinds of different colors of wool. When you say the pure wool, that's like, okay, that's that's white and woolly. All right? So that's the heavenly father. So you know his son, his son, like it was described, is described similarly to, to, his, to his father. All right? He's described similarly to his father. So this is, this is not, it's not hard, man. It's not hard to understand, but the thing is that they try to hide the truth. And they have the power. They have the power to put misinformation and lies out there. The so-called black Latino Native Americans, we do not have the power to put deception out there. We do not have the power to do that. He has the power. He controls the media. He controls these. He hires the, these archaeologists, man. Don't you know the Rothschilds, which are supposedly supposed to be the people of the Heavenly Father, but they're doing all this wickedness on the earth? Don't you know they control the media and they, they send out archaeologists to go dig up things, man? Containing to biblical information. So what do you think they're going to do? They're going to expose themselves? Come on, man. This is um, Daniel's 10 and 5. It says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked and beheld, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. His body was like the burrow, which, which is when it says his body, it means his, uh, his garment, what he was wearing. All right, it was a, a, a dark. That's why you see when we have the depiction, he has a, a, a sort of dark green garment on. Okay, and his face as the appearance of lightning, meaning he was shining. His face was shining, as I, I mentioned before. Wisdom maketh a man's face to shine, according to the scriptures. And his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms, and his feet. His arms and his feet, because your arms are supposed to be the same color as your feet if you're healthy. Like in color to polish brass. And we showed you the color of brass, man. And the voice of his words, like the voice of a multitude. And Esau is so crafty, he'll even take out the he'll even show you a fake <laughs> depiction of brass when you look it up sometimes. He'll show it to look like gold. The brass don't look like gold. Brass is a, a, a brown color. Alright? A darkish brown color. You understand? 
So don't let Esau fool because Esau is a, a master manipulator. Look at this whole situation that he's putting right now. He's a high level witch. Okay? And he plays on the minds of the people. Psychological warfare. All right? Now, going to these comments, you could read all the way down the comments of this particular video, and it says basically most of the people are saying the same thing. Okay, I don't believe this. I don't believe this. This does this not make sense. But guess what? If it was Cesare Bogia, if it was that image that I showed you before, the Edomite with long hair, then they would have believed it. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful. Okay? Because that's who they believe is, the, is the, what the Lord looks like. Uh... See this one, it says, uh, that's an image of a so-called black. This is another video that I found. That ring was worn by a very big man. Okay, okay. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Let's see. Yes, we believe Israel and the media who wouldn't. But I mean, why would they? First of all, don't the, don't the people out there in the Israeli, don't they, those small hats, they don't believe in the, in the Lord. They don't believe that the Messiah came. So why would they? put that a false thing out there about how to Messiah and then make him look like a so-called black man what what how does that fit into their their doctrine yep indoctrination with lies of uh, he just died very early okay i don't know what's, what's up with this guy but um hey man so bullshit you see so these people don't believe this and i can tell you one of the biggest reasons why they don't believe it is she she um she said it very well here uh, uh princess uh valentina she said, notice they hate to admit that the picture on the ring is a, a black messiah. All praises to the, to the most high. All right. Which, which that's it. And more, more things like this are going to come out because it's going to be evident, um, you know, that we are the people of the heavenly father, man. Okay. I will give you fame and praise in, in a place where you were put to shame. And also in Hosea. Let's get that real quick. Let's get Hosea. And I'm going to show you another, another image. A couple other images. Oh, Hosea 1 verse 10. And it says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. Right? So it was said unto us that we are not the people of the Heavenly Father. Esau constantly says that vocab. You know, you, see, you speak about it. I'm looking like, find your own religion, find your own culture. That's what they'll tell you. You see, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. So it's just becoming more and more evident as the time goes by who the true people of the Lord is. And I really want to find that, um, that, um, Hezekiah, that the true coin of Hezekiah, and he got straight up braids in that picture. Just like the uh, the Egyptian icons or the Egyptian um, hieroglyphs, they show the Israelites and they have braids in their hair and afros and beards. But then you'll see certain pictures where, where you can't really tell or they're bleached out. So which was it? Were they were they dark skinned? Did they have braids and afros or, or are they did they look like Edomites? Well, I'll tell you this. We don't have power over the media. We do not control the media. The ones that 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 the the, the ones that um, look like the the so the pale people they control the media not us, okay so we don't have the power to make up anything like that, all right we're taking the inform we're finding the information we're discovering the information, okay they're putting out they're they're um they're putting out what they want to put out in the media, okay so I'll say that so you can use your own common sense. This is um <clears throat> this is what you call Renaissance art. You see what this person this individual is doing. You see what he's doing, right? You see, this is a dark-skinned picture of the Lord with an afro, right, and a beard, right? And another dark-skinned image of one of the saints with a, with a long beard. And then you see him painting it to look like a so-called white person. You see him painting these images to look like so-called white people. You see it, man. It's in front of you, man. It's very evident. And I love this picture because it shows you in real time. They, they incriminate themselves. They incriminate themselves, man. Well, let's get let's get Job 9 and 24. And you could tell me who this dude is fits, man. 
This is Job 9, verse 24. It says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Right? So the wicked are in rulership. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. So who's the top judge? The Lord, the heavenly father and his son. And the rest of the Israelites, man. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? And we can see right here, red-handed, he's covering the faces of the judges. What they were doing, they were destroying these images and they were putting up these images. That's called destroying the faces of the images. If you want to put it in modern day terms, it will be called iconoclasm. All right, iconoclasm. Now, here we go. The definition of iconoclasm is literally means image breaking. Okay? And refers to a reoccurring historical impulse to break and dis or destroy images for religious or political reasons. And that's why they did it, man. So that they can actually, um, you know, put themselves up as the people of the Heavenly Father. So when they came to conquer these different lands and put that deception out there, these people would look at it. Oh, my God, that's God. Yo, yo, you know. For example, in ancient Egypt. The carved visages, which means faces, of some pharaohs were obliterated by their successors. During the French Revolution, images of kings were defaced. Well, the main person who was doing that was these Edomites, okay? I'll tell you that right now. Like, for example, the nose of the Sphinx and all these different things. Somehow the noses always seem to go, go missing. They're always missing the noses. And then Esau, oh, scientifically, the nose is most fragile on these art. That's a BS because it's more exposed because it's out more and man, sh if you believe anything these devils say if you believe if Esau can just tell you something you believe it you're simple okay because Esau's a, a, a liar by nature all he does is lie okay they've def they've been defacing images to so that they can push their agenda you know so that they can depict themselves as something that they're not all right that's why the scriptures say that the vile man will no more be called liberal. Let me get Revelations, the 20th chapter. <laughs> well, some of you Jakes, you thought Biden was liberal. All right. Or some of you thought uh, Justin Trudeau was li liberal. Okay. But now he's saying, yeah, we're taking away your rights. Okay. We're taking away your rights. And well, well, well there's, there's a loophole where we can do it. So we're going to do it. Man, these people are the devil. Okay. This is uh, Revelations 20. <clears throat> in verse uh, 1, it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the, the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. That the bottomless pit represents um, Europe. Okay. Because the agriculture is so futile. It's so bad over there. It's, it's considered a bottomless pit in the scriptures. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, right? So it's the serpent, right? Going back to the garden, the devil, which means what an accuser, all right? And Satan, meaning what an adversary, all right? This is speaking about Esau, Edom, so-called white man. This is what it's speaking about, man. And bound him a thousand years because when you go back to the garden see we got to put this out here real quick just for the new people when you go back to the garden it wasn't an actual serpent that spoke to eve all right it was a man with serpent-like characteristics and that same spirit is in the spirit of these edomites that rule the earth that's why it says this because they run the earth but um they have the spirit of the serpent all right there shall be uh, enmity between thy seed and the, and the woman's seed, meaning uh, the, the, the seed of the righteous, meaning the um, <clears throat> um, meaning uh, uh, Abel. But when Abel died, it went through Seth. Okay. After Abel was murdered by Cain, which was the seed of the serpent spiritually and bound him a thousand years. Okay. So, so Satan. The devil, the Edomites were bound a thousand years. When were they bound a thousand years? When they were put, when they, when we were ruling in Europe for that thousand years period. Started from about, what, 300 and something A.D. 
to a, to about uh, 1380. Okay, that was the beginning of the uh, the Renaissance period, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, right, so so he wasn't able to deceive, because what is Esau's job? To deceive the earth. So while he while he was there and, and he was put in a he was a serf, he was serfs, they were they were serfs, excuse me, in in the, in the earth at that time. Okay. And they and they were they were on a low level. But what happened was they had they intermarried with Jake and they kind of they kind of they kinda slithered they slithered their way up there. And in the process of time, which it took time, it didn't just happen over over one night. It took a process of time where Esau fully got up in there and started to deceive and, and put up his images and um, and destroy the. Um, there was a time where they were just destroying thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of images, man. Okay, because they were trying to do away with the memory that Jake was ruling. Okay. That he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, and after that, he must be loosed. Okay. So I can. Okay. And after that, he must be loosed. A little season. All right. And that little season is now. Okay. This that little season that he's speaking about is now. This is his little season, and his little season is up. That's why the that's why the world is coming to an end. That's why this the, the, the everything is crashing. Everything is, is 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 being brought down, and why he's moving so quickly because he's trying to establish his uh, this kingdom, this wicked, evil, decrepit, depression, depressing kingdom forever. All right, and the, the heavenly Father through his son Yahweh Shai is not going to allow that. All right. All right. So, hey. Um, and I want to get I want to get some oh, just a couple other things I want to get. This this topic can be broken down so many which ways. But um, one thing I want to get is this. One thing I want to get is this. You got you Edomites. You got to explain this, man. This is Acts thirteen and one. It says now. There were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. All right. So they were prophets and teachers, Israelites, as Barnabas and Simeon. And that was called, see the word is, it says, it says Niger, but that's not how you pronounce it. <laughs> you pronounce it like, you, like, they, like Esau pronounced it with the two, the two Gs. That's how you pronounce this word. And Lucius of Cyrene and Manan, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Okay? Now, hold on now. Let's look up this word now. They're supposed to be all of the same race, right? They're all Israelites, right? Let's click this up. Now, I'm going to let him say it. I don't want Esau to to, to flag me, man, because he says it straight. And Jake, Jake better not find out who this this devil is who says <laughs> who says these words, because they'll cancel him. All right. Strong's G thirty five twenty six, Niger, Niger. See, Niger. That's that's the word, which means what? Black. Who are called black. All right. It didn't just say Simeon. It said all. It said multiple of the prophets were called that. Okay, because they must have been, you know, real dark skinned Jakes, right? Real dark skinned Jakes, you know, because you got you got Jakes. Jake in general was this, you know, dark brown to medium brown, but then you got them extra dark skinned Jakes, you know, them, them Samuel Jackson looking Jakes, you know, those um, you know, uh, Wesley Snipes type Jakes. You see, so there's just levels, <laughs> but you're not gonna have the, the nation wasn't those those, and then and then all then all of a sudden the rest of them was was all Edomites, right? They all they all had that pale. They all look like Romans. They all look like the, the Alexander, right? 
Some some of them look like <laughs> like Idris Elba, and the rest look like like Alexander the Greek. Come on, man. This is this is the look of the Jake. The look of the Israelite is from a dark brown to a light to a medium um, brown. Okay. The original look I'm speaking about. Now you got Jakes that look like all nations on the planet Earth. All right. That's why this thing is not based upon skin color. It's based upon the spirit. All right. Some camps, some Israelite camps can't get that because they're emotional. You know, and they want this to be about their feelings. And I don't feel like they should be part. Well, it's not about your feelings, buddy. Okay. Furthermore, when they show a picture of the Lord, right? They show him as... um. Some images will have them as blonde hair and blue eyes and all these things. Well, let's get the law. This is Leviticus 13 and verse uh, 29. It says, if a man or a woman have a plague upon the head or the beard, because guess what? To look the way these Edomites look is a plague. Okay, it's a curse and it's really, uh, it's leprosy. They're clear, they're clean leopards. So why would the Lord send his son back with leprosy? Anyways, let's continue. It says, um, Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, Okay, and behold, if it be in, in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow, thin hair, yellow, thin hair, which is what? Blonde hair. Right, but they'll depict the Lord as blonde. But it's saying if they're, if you look in if you look in the scalp and you see yellow hair, you have a problem. There's a plague. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry scalp, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. So if you got a, a blonde hair, a blonde beard, what what this proves also because it says upon the head. The, the, his head and his hairs were white. This is proving that the head is speaking about the hair on his head. Okay? Anywho. That's a plague. That's leprosy. That's actual leprosy. But when you see when they have their whole hair, lep when you go down, it's going to say if, the, if his whole head is, is yellow or his whole skin is so-called whitish or reddish, then that would make him a clean leper. But when Esau depicts leprosy in a movie... He's going to show you all these boils because he's trying to hide the truth. Let me, let me let's look it up. Let's look up leprosy real quick. Let's look up leprosy. Oh, you see, well, well, Jake, well, Jake, well, Jake got it. Jake got it. Well, you know what? Because Israelites are, <laughs> are coming up. So now they're showing, they're showing what's up. But when you go into the movies, this is what they'll depict as leprosy. This stuff. This is not what the scriptures are speaking about. With leprosy. This is not what it's speaking about. Okay? He'll have a guy with a veil over his face. He can't show his face. He's got a veil. That's not what leprosy is. Okay? Leprosy clearly simply means that the loss of pigmentation in your hair or your or your 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 uh, flesh. Okay? And that's what these, these Edomites have a lot a lack of pigmentation. Alright. It says, but if the priest look on it, and then behold, there be no white hair in the bright spot, and it be no lower than the other skin, but be somewhat dark. Uh-oh. 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 It says dark. So it's supposed to be dark. <laughs> what happened to, the, what happened to the, the beach boy look that they gave the Lord? Then the priest shall shut him up seven days, and the priest shall look upon him the seventh day, and if it be spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. You dig? And if the bright spot stay in his place and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark it is a, a, a rising of the burning and the priest shall pronounce him clean for it is an inflammation of the burning okay okay so yeah so that, that's the point on that 
Oh, well, let's jump to this part. It says, And if the priest look on the plague of the skull, and behold, it be not in the sight deeper than the skin, and that there is no pl no black hair in it, then the then the priest shall shut up shut up him that hath the plague of the the skull seven days. So hold on, why is he why does he say black hair? What about the brunettes? What about the uh, <laughs> you know? What about the um, the blonde hair or the redhead people? What about the redhead? Why can not he speak about redhead people? Because the Israelites <laughs> did not. That's not was not the look of the Israelites. The Israelites had black, woolly hair, all right, or coarse hair. Yes, yeah, different Israelites with certain different textures, but you know the predominant look was the was the so-called uh, the prototype look of an Israelite would be the, the the black the black hair, okay, and it would be coarse because even the so-called Latinos they got coarse hair, all right. They got coarse. They, all the Israelites have thick, strong hair. All right. And in the seventh day, the priest shall look on the plague and behold, if the skull spread not and there be in it no yellow hair, blonde hair, and the skull be not in the sight deeper than the skin, he shall be shaven, but the skull shall he not shave and the priest shall shut up him that hath the scow seven days more. Anywho, let's get let's get the account of uh, Numbers, the twelfth chapter, dealing with uh, Miriam. Okay, because Miriam was cursed because she was talking against, she was running her beaks against uh, uh, against Moses, man. Okay, and you women got to learn how to not be running your beak. All right, you gonna learn, man. This is uh, Numbers twelve. In verse, I just want to get to the point. In verse 9, it says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. Wait a minute. Leprous, white as snow. Wow. Wow. So you're saying leprosy is to look like a so-called white person? Yes, that's what leprosy is, man. So for you to say that the son of the heavenly father had this kind of flesh when he came on the earth is blasphemous. It's blasphemous. It's slander. It's, it's, it's disgraceful. You understand? Because this in itself is a curse. Going back, well, I told you Esau came out red. This is a reddish, pinkish flesh. Look, it, it matches the shirt. Because you see the blood showing forth through the skin, especially when they're babies. Don't make me look up a. Don't make me look up a, a so-called a, a Caucasian baby. Don't make me look it up, man. Dare me to do it. All right. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Okay, which means what? She had leprosy. Right. So that's the that's the bottom line, and she was you know she had to get out the camp for seven days and be up, be up in the wilderness, but hey, that's showing you that the Lord did not look like that. But the, the, in the minds of these people and the witchcraft that Esau has put on these people, because darkness, gross darkness, has covered the earth. Let's get it. They actually believe, but that's why when you type in Google, why don't you find any images of, of uh, they don't, you don't even find the, 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 they say he's, some, oh, no, no, no. Now they're starting to say, oh, no, he's, he's, he was actually Arab. He was olive skin. Well, how come you don't find any olive skin color of, of the Lord when you type in that name? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This is Isaiah 60 and 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Glory of Yahweh Shem Shai. For behold, the darkness shall cover the whole the, the earth. And that's what's ha that's what happened. The earth is covered in darkness, which means they don't know the truth. They don't see the light. They're just in they're just engulfed in lies and deception because the serpent is ruling the earth. And gross darkness the people. But the, the Yahweh Shem Shai shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So listen, the glory is being seen upon his prophets. All right? Now let's do, let's do this now. We type we typed in Jesus Christos and we seen what what popped up, right? Well, let's type in 
Yahweh Shai. Let's type in Yahweh Shai, man. I'm not going to type in the black Yahweh. No, we're going to type in Yahweh Shai. Boom. That's the correct image, man. See that with that glow? Glorious, the glorious, um, the white beard. This is the correct image. <laughs> they got it. They got it. See, because Israel is waking up. All right? Israel is waking up, man. Okay, so you so you see now that the, this is the correct depiction, the white woolly hair. All right, look, the, the the eyes of a flame of fire. These listen, man. When you when you when you eat them, might see the Lord. You guys are gonna are gonna are gonna uh, defecate in, on yourselves, man. Okay, his arms won't be out like this, but you know he'll be more covered up. But this is the correct depiction, man. You see. You understand? Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, with that, hopefully this was edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And the truth is going to be revealed. So you can lie all you want. You can make up all kind of cognitive dissonance. It's not going to change the fact because the truth is being declared, which has been so long without fruit. So with that, I'll say Shalom.